Night three of the Democratic National Convention was focused on women. Women fighting for their rights, women pushing for change, and women who don't wanna say they told you so, but they told you so. We also heard from Elizabeth Warren, who delivered a speech from inside a school about the Biden policies that would help families and working mothers. Now, if you paid attention, you would have noticed that she also left a little Easter egg for people in the background with letter blocks spelling out B-L-M, which if you think about it, is the perfect Rorschach test. Because if you're woke, it stands for Black Lives Matter. If you're conservative, it means Blue Lives Matter. And in my mind, it means Beyonce loves me. Oh my God, Beyonce loves me. I knew it, I knew it. Now, this wasn't just women's night because it had a lot of women speaking. It was women's night because it highlighted the countless obstacles and challenges that women have been fighting against for years. From reproductive rights, to gun violence, to domestic abuse, which Biden himself helped tackle with the Violence Against Women Act. It was a powerful and moving tribute to women across America that brought many people to tears. Now, as usual, there's always one guy who's always trying to crash girls' night. But I don't think anyone minded when it turned out to be this guy. I did hope, for the sake of our country, that Donald Trump might show some interest in taking the job seriously. That he might come to feel the weight of the office and discover some reverence for the democracy that had been placed in his care. But he never did. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work. No interest in finding common ground. No interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends. No interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job because he can't. Wow, President Obama. I think you're being a little harsh here. The man's only been in office for three years and seven months. Give the dude some time to warm up. But this speech wasn't just brutal, it was straight to the point. Not even being mean about it, like Obama was just laying out why President Trump has failed in a real and honest way. And I know he's too classy for this, but I think Obama would make a great Yelper. Uh, Vincenzo's quality Italian has no interest in making a decent meatball sub. Uh, they won't ever grow into your fave calzone joint because they can't. So from Obama to Trump's former cabinet members to Trump's own niece, Everyone, except Trump's tailor, says this guy hasn't grown at all. And although there were moments of hopefulness in the speech, the overall feeling was that America was on the brink of death. And this was the last chance to save it. Like, it didn't feel like the usual things are gonna get better Obama speech. It felt more like a funeral for democracy. Basically, four years of Trump took Obama from, uh, yes, we can, to uh, let us pray. So after everyone else had their turn, it was time for the big finale, the official nomination of vice presidential candidate Kamala Devi Harris. And although Kamala kicked off the night from what looked like backstage at a U2 concert, she finally got her grand moment at the end of the show. Greetings, America. That I am here tonight is a testament to the dedication of generations before me. Women and men who believed so fiercely in the promise of equality, liberty, and justice for all. I have fought for children and survivors of sexual assault. I fought against transnational criminal organizations. I took on the biggest banks and helped take down one of the biggest for-profit colleges. I know a predator when I see one. My mother taught me that service to others gives life purpose and meaning. She probably could have never imagined that I would be standing before you now and speaking these words. I accept your nomination for Vice President of the United States of America. Wow. I don't care what you say, man. That was one hell of a moment. The first black woman to be a vice presidential nominee. Also, is it just me or does Kamala have like a really big living room? And I thought Kamala gave a good speech, but my favorite line of all was when she said, I know a predator when I see one. It made me wish that she would catch a predator, Donald Trump, 
You know, like he shows up at an arena expecting a rally, but it's just Kamala inside with a camera crew. She throws his tweets on the table and is like, did you write these messages? And then he starts to run away, but then remembers he can't run. And what I love about that line is that it really shows you how bad Trump is. She didn't even need to say his name. And we were all sitting at home like, "Mm mm-hmm, we know which predator she's talking about. I mean, except for Trump. I bet he was sitting watching at home like, I can spot a predator too. I already aced that test. Lion, tiger, cheetah, cobra, and the biggest predator of all, Robert Mueller. Before we go, there are a lot of groups out there right now who are working to protect and advance voting rights for the elections in November. Now, one of them is the Alliance for Youth Organizing, which is a national network of local-led youth organizations who are mobilizing people to vote. If you can help them and you would like to join in their cause, then please visit the link below and donate whatever you can.